The Zhou dynasty was a Chinese dynasty that followed the Shang dynasty and preceded the Qin dynasty. Although the Zhou dynasty lasted longer than any other dynasty in Chinese history, the actual political and military control of China by the dynasty, surnamed Ji, lasted only until 771 BC, a period known as the Western Zhou. This period of Chinese history produced what many consider the zenith of Chinese bronze ware making. The dynasty also spans the period in which the written script evolved into its modern form with the use of an archaic clerical script that emerged during the late Warring States period. History Foundation Mythological Origins According to Chinese mythography, the Zhou lineage began when Jiang Yuan, a consort of the legendary emperor Aku miraculously conceived a child, Qi, the abandoned one, after stepping into the divine footprint of Shangdi. Qi was a culture hero credited with surviving three abandonments by his mother and with greatly improving Qi agriculture, to the point where he was granted lordship over Tai and the surname Ji by his own Qi king in a later posthumous name, Hu Ji, Lord of Millet, by the Tang of Shang. He even received sacrifice as a harvest god. The term Hu Ji was probably an hereditary title attached to a lineage. Qi's son, or rather that of the Huji. Buzhu is said to have abandoned his position as agrarian master in old age and either he or his son Ju abandoned agriculture entirely, living a nomadic life in the manner of the Zirong and Rongdi. Ju's son Lu, however, led his people to prosperity by restoring agriculture and settling them at a place called Bin, which his descendants ruled for generations. Tai later led the clan from Bin to Zhou, an area in the Wei River Valley of modern-day Qishan County. The duke passed over his two elder sons Taiba and Zhongyong to favor Jili, a warrior who conquered several Zirong tribes as a vassal of the Shang kings Wu Yi and Wen Ding before being treacherously killed. Taiba and Zhongyong had supposedly already fled to the Yangtze Delta, where they established the state of Wu among the tribes there. Jili's son Wen bribed his way out of imprisonment and moved the Zhou capital to Fang. Around 1046 BCE, Wen's son Wu and his ally Jiang Zia led an army of 45,000 men and 300 chariots across the Yellow River and defeated King Zhou of Shang at the Battle of Muya, marking the beginning of the Zhou dynasty. The Zhou and Thoft a member of the defeated Shang royal family as the Duke of Song, which was held by descendants of the Shang royal family until its end. Cultural origins According to Nicholas Bodman, the Zhou appear to have spoken a language not basically different in vocabulary and syntax from that of the Shang. A recent study by David McCraw, using lexical statistics, reached the same conclusion. The Zhou emulated extensively Shang cultural practices, perhaps to legitimize their own rule, and became the successors to Shang culture. At the same time, the Zhou may also have been connected to the Zirong, a broadly defined cultural group to the west of the Shang, which the Shang regarded as tributaries. According to the historian Li Feng, the term wrong during the Western Zhou period was likely used to designate political and military adversaries rather than cultural and ethnic. Others, the Proto-Zhou were first located in the Shaanxi Shanxi Highland, where they absorbed elements from the Guangxi culture and from the steppe dwellers. King Lu moved his people to the Lower Fen Valley and to the western bank of the Yellow River, where they resumed agriculture. His son, King Ji, led the Zhou to the upper valley of the Jing River. They stayed there until Danfu moved again to the Wei Valley in order to avoid incursion by the Rongdi nomads. During this period, the Zhou mingled with the Qiang people, who provided them with a cultural inheritance from the SIWA and Anga peoples and formed a political alliance with them. In all these stages, the advanced Shang bronze culture constantly imparted its influence on the Zhou. The Qi area was the region in which all these influences would come to fruition. The contact among the Proto-Zhou, the native Shaanxi Longshan, the Qiang, and the northern steppe traditions, plus the tradition of the Shang produced the momentum for change and development.
Western Joking Wu maintained the old capital for ceremonial purposes but constructed a new one for his palace and administration nearby at Hao. Although Wu's early death left a young and inexperienced heir, the Duke of Zhou assisted his nephew King Cheng in consolidating royal power. Wary of the Duke of Zhou's increasing power, the three guards, Zhou princes stationed on the eastern plain, rose in rebellion against his regency. Even though they garnered the support of independent-minded nobles, Shang partisans and several Dongyi tribes, the Duke of Zhou quelled the rebellion, and further expanded the Zhou kingdom into the east, to maintain Zhou authority over its greatly expanded territory and prevent other revolts, he set up the Fengjian system. Furthermore, he countered Zhou's crisis of legitimacy by expounding the doctrine of the Mandate of Heaven while accommodating important Shang rituals at Wangcheng and Chengzhou. Over time, this decentralized system became strained as the familial relationships between the Zhou kings and the regional dynasties thinned over the generations. Peripheral territories developed local power and prestige on par with that of the Zhou. When King Yu demoted and exiled his Jiang queen in favor of the beautiful but common Bao Si, the disgraced queen's father the Marquis of Shen joined with Zheng and the Quanrong barbarians to sack Hao in 771 BC. Modern scholars have surmised that the sack of Hao Jing might have been connected to a Scythian raid from the Altai before their westward expansion. With King Yu dead, a conclave of nobles met at Shen and declared the Marquis's grandson King Ping. The capital was moved eastward to Chengzhou, marking the end of the a Western Zhou and the beginning of the Eastern Zhou dynasty. Eastern Zhou The Eastern Zhou was characterized by an accelerating collapse of royal authority. Although the king's ritual importance allowed over five more centuries of rule, the Confucian chronicle of the early years of this process led to its title of the Spring and Autumn period. The partition of Jin in the mid-5th century BC initiated a second phase, the Warring States. In 403 BC, the Zhou court recognized Han, Zhao, and Wei as fully independent states. In 344 BC, the first Duke Hui of Wei claimed the royal title of king for himself. A series of states rose to prominence before each falling in turn, but Zhou was a minor player in these conflicts. The last Zhou king is traditionally taken to be Nan, who was killed when Qin captured the capital Chengzhou in 256 BC. A king Hui was declared, but his splinter state was fully removed by 249 BC. Qin's unification of China concluded in 221 BC with Qin Shi Huang's annexation of Qi. The Eastern Zhou, however, is also remembered as the Golden Age of Chinese philosophy. The hundred schools of thought which flourished his rival lords patronized itinerant Xi scholars as led by the example of Qi's Jixia Academy. The nine schools of thought which came to dominate the others were Confucianism, Legalism, Taoism, Moism, the Utopian Communalist Agriculturalism, two strains of diplomatists, the Sophistic Logicians, Sun Tzu's Militarists, and the Naturalists. Although only the first three of these went on to receive imperial patronage in later dynasties, doctrines from each influenced the others and Chinese society in sometimes unusual ways. The Monists, for instance, found little interest in their praise of meritocracy but much acceptance for their mastery of siege warfare much later. However, their arguments against nepotism were used in favor of establishing the imperial examination system culture and society. Mandate of Heaven in the Chinese historical tradition The Zhou defeated the Shang and oriented the Shang system of ancestor worship towards a universalized worship, away from the worship of Shangdi and to that of Tian or Heaven. They legitimize their rule by invoking the Mandate of Heaven, the notion that the ruler governed by divine right and that his dethronement would prove that he had lost the Mandate. Disasters and successful rebellions would thus show that the ruling family had lost this mandate. 
The mandate asserted that Zhou moral superiority justified taking over Shang territories and that heaven had imposed a moral mandate on them to replace the Shang, whom they saw as evil men whose policies brought pain to the people through corruption. The doctrine explained and justified the demise of the Qi and Shang dynasties in, at the same time, supported the legitimacy of present and future rulers. Before conquering Shang, Zhou was a state in Shaanxi. Gannett describes the Zhou state as a city, which was in contact with the barbarian peoples of the western regions and more warlike than the Shang. The Zhou dynasty was founded by the Ji family and operated from four capitals throughout its history. Sharing the language and culture of the Shang, the early Zhou rulers, through conquest and colonization, established a large imperial territory where in states as far as Shandong acknowledged Zhou rule and took part in elite culture. The spread of Zhou bronzes, though, was concurrent with the continued use of Shang-style pottery in the distant regions, and these states were the last to secede during the late Western War. The mandate of heaven was based on rules. In return, the ruler was duty-bound to uphold heaven's principle and honor. Feudalism Western writers often describe the Zhou period as feudal because the Zhou's Fengjian system invites comparison with medieval rule in Europe. There were many similarities between the decentralized systems. When the dynasty was established, the conquered land was divided into hereditary fiefs that eventually became powerful in their own right. In matters of inheritance, the Zhou dynasty recognized only patrilineal primogeniture as legal. According to Tao, the Sung Fa or descent line system has the following characteristics. Patrilineal descent, patrilineal succession, patriarchate, sibexogamy, and primogeniture, the system, also called extensive stratified patrilineage, was defined by the anthropologist Chang Quang Chi as characterized by the fact that the eldest son of each generation formed the main of line, descent and political authority whereas the younger brothers were moved out to establish new lineages of lesser authority. The farther removed, the lesser the political authority. Every defines the descent line system as follows. A great line is the line of eldest sons continuing indefinitely from a founding ancestor. A lesser line is the line of eldest sons going back no more than five generations. Great lines and lesser lines continually spin off new lesser lines founded by younger sons. K.E. Brashia writes in his book, Ancestral Memory in Early China, about the Sung F.A. system of patrilineal primogeniture. The greater lineage, if it has survived, is the direct succession from father to eldest son and is not defined via the collateral shifts of the lesser lineages. In discussions that demarcate between trunk and collateral lines, the former is called a zong and the latter a zu, whereas the whole lineage is dubbed the shi. On one hand every son who is not the eldest and hence not heir to the lineage territory has the potential of becoming a progenitor and fostering a new trunk lineage. According to the Zhou commentary, the son of heaven divided land among his feudal lords. His feudal lords divided land among their dependent families and so forth down the pecking order to the officers who had their dependent kin and the commoners who each had his apportioned relations and all had their graded precedence. This type of unilineal descent group later became the model of the Korean family through the influence of Neo-Confucianism, as Zhu Xi and others advocated its re-establishment in China. Fengjian system and bureaucracy there were five peerage ranks below the royal ranks, in descending order with common English translations, Gong, Duke, Hu, Marquis, Bo, Count, Zi, Viscount, and Nan, Baron. At times, a vigorous duke would take power from his nobles and centralize the state. Centralization became more necessary as the states began to war among themselves and decentralization encouraged more war. If a duke took power from his nobles, the state would have to be administered bureaucratically by appointed officials. Despite these similarities, there are a number of important differences from medieval Europe. One obvious difference is that the Zhou ruled from old cities rather than castles. 
Another was China's distinct class system, which lacked an organized clergy but saw the Shangxi clan yeomen become masters of ritual and ceremony known as Shi. When a dukedom was centralized, these people would find employment as government officials or offices. These hereditary classes were similar to Western knights in status and breeding, but like Western clergy were expected to be something of a scholar instead of a warrior. Being appointed, they could move from one state to another. Some would travel from state to state peddling schemes of administrative or military reform. Those who could not find employment would often end up teaching young men who aspired to official status. The most famous of these was Confucius, who taught a system of mutual duty between superiors and inferiors. In contrast, the legalists had no time for Confucian virtue and advocated a system of strict laws and harsh punishments. The wars of the warring states were finally ended by the most legalist state of all, Qin. When the Qin dynasty fell and was replaced by the Han dynasty, many Chinese were relieved to return to the more humane virtues of Confucius. Agriculture Agriculture in the Zhou dynasty was very intensive and, in many cases, directed by the government. All farming lands were owned by nobles, who then gave their land to their serfs, a situation similar to European feudalism. For example, a piece of land was divided into nine squares in the well-field system, with the grain from the middle square taken by the government and that of surrounding squares kept by individual farmers. This way, the government was able to store surplus food and distribute it in times of famine or bad harvest. Some important manufacturing sectors during this period included bronze smelting, which was integral to making weapons and farming tools. Again, these industries were dominated by the nobility who directed the production of such materials. China's first projects of hydraulic engineering were initiated during the Zhou dynasty, ultimately as a means to aid agricultural irrigation. The Chancellor of Wei, Sun Xuao, who served King Zhuang of Chu, dammed a river to create an enormous irrigation reservoir in modern-day northern Anhui province. For this, Sun Xu is credited as China's first hydraulic engineer. The later Wei statesman Zimen Bao, who served Marquis Wen of Wei, was the first hydraulic engineer of China to have created a large irrigation canal system. As the main focus of his grandiose project, his canal work eventually diverted the waters of the entire Zhang River to a spot further up the Yellow River. Military The early Western Zhou supported a strong army, split into two major units, the Six Armies of the West, and the Eight Armies of Cheng Zhao. The armies campaigned in the northern Lois Plateau, modern Ningxia and the Yellow River floodplain. The military prowess of Zhou peaked during the 19th year of King Zhao's reign, when the Six Armies were wiped out along with King Zhao on a campaign around the Han River. Early Zhou kings were true commanders-in-chief. They were in constant wars with barbarians on behalf of the fiefs called Guo, which at that time meant statelet or principality. King Zhao was famous for repeated campaigns in the Yangtze areas and died in his last action. Later kings' campaigns were less effective. King Li led 14 armies against barbarians in the south but failed to achieve any victory. King Shan fought the Quanrong nomads in vain. King Yu was killed by the Quanrong when Hao Jing was sacked. Although chariots had been introduced to China during the Shang dynasty from Central Asia, the Zhou period saw the first major use of chariots in battle. Recent archaeological finds demonstrate similarities between horse burials of the Shang and Zhou dynasties and Indo-European peoples in the West. Other possible cultural influences resulting from Indo-European contact in this period may include fighting styles, head and hoof tea rules, art motifs and myths. Philosophy during the Zhou Dynasty The origins of native Chinese philosophy developed its initial stages beginning in the 6th century BC. The greatest Chinese philosophers, those who made the greatest impact on later generations of Chinese, were Confucius, founder of Confucianism, and Laozi, founder of Taoism. Other philosophers, theorists, 
and schools of thought in this era were Motsi, founder of Mohism, Mencius, a famous Confucian who expanded upon Confucius' legacy, Shang Yang and Han Fei, responsible for the development of ancient Chinese legalism, and Zun Zi, who was arguably the center of ancient Chinese intellectual life during his time, even more so than iconic intellectual figures such as Mencius. Li established during the Western period the Li traditional Chinese, simplified Chinese, Pinyin, Li, ritual system encoded an understanding of manners as an expression of the social hierarchy, ethics, and regulation concerning material life. The corresponding social practices became idealized within Confucian ideology. The system was canonized in the Book of Rites, Joli, and a Yili compendiums of the Han Dynasty, thus becoming the heart of the Chinese imperial ideology. While the system was initially a respected body of concrete regulations, the fragmentation of the Western Zhou period led the ritual to drift towards moralization and formalization in regard to the five orders of Chinese nobility, ancestral temples, ceremonial regulations, art gallery Western Zhou Defang ritual bronze vessel, Dake bronze ritual vessel, Yu bronze ritual vessel, Kai Zhong Hu bronze vessel, bronze mirror holder C, 1000 BC, spring and autumn period Dao vessel with a hunting scene, a bow bell of the Duke of Qin, Pu vessel with dragon designs, bronze ding vessel, bronze musical bell, bronze vessels, a square bronze hu vessel, bronze bird-shaped wine server, Western Zhou Dynasty musical bronze bell, silk painting of a man railing a dragon, 6th century BC, warring states period bronze ritual food vessel with lacquer design, 5th-4th century BC, a jade bai with two dragons, embroidered silk gauze garment from a 4th century BC tomb at Mashan, Hubei Pra province bronze and silver canteen.